Hey everybody, welcome to the studio. This month I'm going to share with you how to prep your panel in a really quick and easy way so that no matter if you're out on the field landscape painting or in your studio with a spontaneous idea, you can start and paint immediately. Now, I'm going to be showing you this method because I use it a lot. Um, there's another Campitura painting video on my Patreon site that I've already done. This was maybe two or three years ago now. And that's a little bit more involved Campitura. It's an excellent one to use if you are at an atelier learning how to paint casts, for example. Um, it's an excellent one to use if you have time for it to dry for a really long time, so uh, like three days, if you could let it dry for three days. That's kind of a long time if you have an idea and you want to paint. So that's why I'd like to show you this one today. It's the one that I go to in a lot of my video demonstrations as well. I wanted to show this to you because I do it really quick in some of those videos and I don't really talk about how I'm doing it. And so I'd like to slow down, pull back, and talk a lot about how to do it right. Um, and just to make sure that you guys have a nice painting surface to work on. So why do a Campitura? If we didn't lay down a ground color, and if we painted just on a white canvas, it would, it would be a harder start to discover the accurate colors. If we lay down that Campitura, it helps us to not be influenced by the white of the canvas. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a white canvas and you're painting a flower and you have a yellow flower. If you put down yellow ochre, which is a relatively light value pigment on the white, it's going to look really dark just because it's on top of a white canvas. So if, think about this, if you put down that yellow ochre on a middle value, like the raw umber wash would be, it won't look too light nor too dark because it's not surrounded by a color that is really light or really dark. That's the main point here, is to give ourselves a ground color that will help us to be able to see accurately if our colors that we choose are in the ballpark without being influenced wrongly by the white canvas. Before I show you the materials and everything that's involved, I'd like to show you some examples of work that have the Campitura on them. One of them, actually this one behind me, I did lay down the Campitura, and you might have watched that flower painting video where I painted this central flower uh, here. And that one, um, I didn't really describe too much about how to put that raw umber wash down but you can see that it uh, no longer shows, but it was very helpful in creating that painting. Another one where I've used it is in this, this was my still life painting demonstration from this past summer's workshop. And you can see it's uh, not varnished, it's not quite uh, f finished. I have to finish the green and the leaves there. But right down here is the plain, untouched, raw umber Campitura. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today. And I'm gonna show you some techniques on how to make it really nice and smooth. One thing to keep in mind is that with this Campitura, you want it to end up to be approximately the color of a cardboard box. So if you have one of those lying around, you might wanna grab it. The other time that I used this Campitura in a video that I can recall that I can still show you is on this painting here. And so this was a flower painting done from life and I demonstrated how to um, paint these petals. And you can see that it is the raw umber wash as well. It's just a little bit lighter. It's probably a little bit too light. I could have gone a little bit darker and I didn't and it was fine. But I'm gonna show you how to do it really, really well today. So if you wanna follow along, I'm going to take the next moments to describe the materials. You can gather them together and then we can do this nice, quick and easy and be ready to paint. Here are the materials. So this right here is the panel that I always recommend. It is the Raphael Oil Primed Linen Panel. 
This is the sticker on the back. You can see it says Raphael Premium Archival Oil Primed Linen Panels. Made in Italy. They're really, really good panels. So I recommend, even if you're doing studies, work on a good surface because it makes painting so much easier. So I have my panel here. Then I have a series of brushes. So you could use any brush, but I really recommend using a soft brush. So this is a brush I just picked up at like Home Depot and it's relatively soft on the end. This one is a more expensive brush. It's from Michaels and it's the Simply Simmons brush. And I don't, you don't need to get this brush. It's too expensive for what it's worth, but it is very, very soft. And that makes a difference. So rather than use anything that's too bristly, if we use something that's soft, this is gonna go down much smoother, much nicer. This is an example of another brush, but it's a little bit small. So I'm recommending the other kinds of brushes more so, but this one is still nice. This is a Rosemary brush. You might have heard of that company. It's a Rosemary and Company Long Flat Series 279. And it's really beautiful, very soft, but um, it's a little bit small for the panel, especially if you're doing something like uh, 11 by 14. My absolute favorite brush to use for the Campitura is this one, and you can buy these at Michaels in packs of three. They come in three different sizes, so I think this is the biggest one, and then one is like this size and the other is like, you know, half of it. And it's so incredibly soft, and when you lay down this paint, it just goes on perfectly without leaving any stripes. So this is the brush that I'm going to be using today. They're, they're pretty cheap. They're probably only a couple dollars at Michael's Arts and Crafts. Okay, I also have a palette. This is my wood palette. You could use a paper palette if you have one of those as well. That doesn't matter. And we have the raw umber paint here. So the brand that I use and the brand that I trained on is Windsor & Newton. And it's the Artist's Oil Color. So if you're using Windsor & Newton, they have different levels. Do not use the student level paint. Use the professional level paint. Student level paint has fillers inside combined with the pigment and the oil to make it cheaper for the manufacturer to make. And it is it sort of decreases the pigment strength as well and makes for not fun painting. So skip it all together. This is um, not a very expensive color because it is an earth tone color and it is the raw umber. I like to get the big tube because the big tube, uh, you'll go through it kind of quickly, especially if you're doing this raw umber campitura on everything that you're painting. Just to speak a moment about the raw umber, it is the fastest drying pigment on the palette that I recommend. It is the fastest drying pigment and you can tell um, anything that is more of an umber or an earth tone color is going to dry faster than let's say a cadmium color or like a bright yellow. Now um, this is all relative but the raw umber is also a beautiful color to put down and work off of. So it's not like a bright orange that can be very distracting or anything like that. It's it's a it's a beautiful color even even if you're working on like let's say flesh tones. So it's it's definitely my number one go-to for this. You could also use burnt umber if you wanted something a little bit more red, but uh, this is definitely my go-to. We also have, I have a piece of cardboard here so I can compare the value. And it's just a standard piece of cardboard, a paper towel, and I have my two jars filled. Um, one has uh, mineral spirits and the other one is empty. So to begin, I'd like to show you a little trick about how you can be more environmentally friendly with your mineral spirits. So you never want to throw your mineral spirits down the drain. That would be something that would get into our water supply and not be um, good for the environment at all. Um, these two jars 
This one is empty. And this one has my used mineral spirits in it. So when I say mineral spirits, I'm talking about, first of all, odorless mineral spirits. 100% odorless mineral spirits. Gamsol is a company that makes a really nice one, but you can also find, I think the brand is called Mona Lisa at Michael's Arts and Crafts. You can get a big gallon of it and it's also 100% odorless mineral spirits. So anytime in any video, whenever I mention mineral spirits, that's what I'm talking about. So in this jar in particular, there is sediment on the bottom. What I do at the end of each painting day is I wash my brushes in odorless mineral spirits and I pour it back into this jar. So this jar is always empty at the end of the day and this one is always full. So watch this. It's been sitting here for 24 hours. If I take this jar and pour the mineral spirits into the new jar, the clean jar, it's not new, the clean jar, it is clear. And what's remaining in this is uh, the sediment, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's a thick, goopy, oil paint residue sediment from every time that I've washed my brush. It settles down to the bottom of the jar. So this is my sediment jar, this is my working jar, and then after I work with it and clean my brushes, and I'm done at the end of the day, I'll pour it back in here, put the lids on top, and the, um, the oil paint will settle down to the bottom of the jar, and this will then, I'll be able to use the odorless mineral spirits over and over again. It's amazing. And in this way, I haven't had to ever throw away any mineral spirits. And it's also, um, you can keep these jars going for a really long time because it takes a long time to fill it up with all this sediment. It's also nice because if you go to clean your brushes, you never want to stick them into that sediment. It's goopy, it's thick, it's something you don't really want your brushes to ever come in contact with unless you decide to paint with it. A uh, fun tip, Rembrandt used to use that sediment to campitura his canvases because it's a beautiful sort of brownish neutral color that is similar to the color that we're going to be putting down. Not quite. It's more the other campitura color in my other campitura painting video, but that's a really neat tip. But anyway, sediment jar, empty jar. You can clean your brushes in this jar. You can scrub them at the bottom and they, you won't worry about them getting really dirty because this is a, a, a jar that is, uh, has um, no sediment at the bottom. Okay, now we're ready to begin. The first thing that you wanna do is take your, take your brush and actually make sure that there is no dust or anything on your panel. So just wipe it clean if you think there might be any dust on it. The next thing is take your brush and dip it into that mineral spirits and kind of wipe it off a little bit and paint the blank, just clear mineral spirits onto your canvas. And you don't want a lot, so you could wipe off uh, more of the mineral spirits if you think that it's like, if your brush is drippy. My brush is not drippy. It's just enough to put a nice coat of mineral spirits on the canvas. Now, here's an interesting tip. Mineral spirits dries by evaporation. So if we were to stay here and wait, slowly this would start to dissipate and set and after, um, and it would also be absorbed by the canvas. So after a while, it would become dry again. So you wanna keep this in mind, number one, to keep your studio very well ventilated because of this. Number two, because you don't wanna to wait too long before you add the paint into this layer when we create that campitura. So let's move these out of the way and let's use the paint, Oops. 
we will take some of the paint. You don't need too much, so I'm putting out maybe a quarter size. And you can then take, also take your paper towel, take this same brush and try to put that raw umber nice and evenly on your brush. Now, then what you do is you take that and you spread it nice and evenly. It can be messy actually, on your panel. Now, this looks dark, don't worry, because we're going to use our paper towel to wipe it off. Now, I think what I'm noticing is that I use maybe a little bit too much mineral spirits because it seems kind of watery. Like when I go like this, it picks up a lot. So we'll see, if I use too much, I'll show you what to do. All right, so that's settled. I'm going to now take my paper towel and actually I'm going to lay it kind of more flat like this and I'm going to rub and wipe away. Now, oops, you'll know if you use too much mineral spirits, if you can wipe a lot away. And so it looks like I did. I used too much mineral spirits because as I continue to wipe, It's getting lighter than my cardboard. That's my sample. That's the value that I want to get to. So what I'm going to do is continue to wipe it off in this way, kind of helping it dry a little bit. Okay, getting it nice and even. I like even. Now what I can do, because in that wiping process, I wiped a lot of the mineral spirits away as well, I can take my brush again, okay, and go back in. It's actually really good that I had too much mineral spirits on there because now you know what to do if that happens. We want it to be this nice middle value. If your Campitura is too light, it's not going to serve its purpose. Just like the white canvas, it'll be too light and it's not going to help you see colors well. All right, now, I could even wait a few minutes if I wanted to. And I, in fact, I'm going to grab another paper towel because it still seems like maybe it's a little too wet. We'll see. That's better. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Could go it could go even darker still because looking at this well that's a pretty good value actually it's very very close if I wanted to I could wait a little bit and put another layer on there but uh, I'm not going to I think that this is just fine so what you want to do at this point is just let it dry don't worry though if you touch it and some more comes off. So for example, if I touch it like this, you can see that that comes off. This whole Campitura color is just an under layer. And so we will be painting over the entire thing when we're making a painting. 
And so, I mean, unless you're not, which is another, it's a different way of painting, um, very difficult way of painting. So I always, you know, I always paint over most of it. I always put in a background color, let's say that, over this can't be true color when I'm done. So um, don't worry if you get some fingerprints on it. That's totally fine. If you see any brush hairs or anything in there, I recommend trying to get them out. You know, if you see any big dust particles or anything like that, you could use your brush and you can pick away at them. You know, let's say you pick up some dust particles and then you go back in with a nice smooth brush. Now, ooh, what I can do is demonstrate also a couple things that can happen if you don't have a soft brush. Yeah, I'll show you that. So let's say, you know, you didn't have to pick out any dust or anything and everything was fine. Just set it aside and let it dry. And it, when you let it dry, don't lay it flat so that dust can just drop on it and settle. You want to lean it up against a wall with the wet part facing the wall so that no dust gets kicked up. Now, let's say you have a brush and the brush is terrible. Let's say the brush like leaves like all these marks, right? That's kind of distracting and you wouldn't want to do that. So if you don't have a soft brush to smooth it out light as a feather, that's why the paper towel really comes in handy. And you could even go in sort of circular motions if you wanted to. But some people, you know, after they use the paper towel, they like to try the brush again. It's up to you, but I recommend having a nice smooth surface to work on like this. Beautiful. Let's say you're able to paint immediately, okay? One of the methods that I teach and a lot of the videos that I do is to start painting pretty quickly. You start drawing and you start mapping out what you're doing. So I'm gonna grab a brush real quick. So I grabbed a couple brushes because I'm gonna show you a couple techniques because you can work with this panel when it's wet. So let's say you are doing a portrait and you wanna do the wipe away method. With this being wet like this, it's really nice because you can take some clean mineral spirits on your brush, maybe um, not too sopping wet. And let's say you're doing something like, I don't know, you're doing, let's say it's a still life and it has leaves in it like my tree of life painting. You can push and scrub your shapes away and you can draw in this way. It's really fun. You can be nice and creative with it. It's a different working method. And if you want to see this illustrated in a video um, and really put to the test, uh, there is a how to paint the still life video on my Patreon site. And it is the first video of the series. Um, and it shows the wipeout method. All right, so. Now at this point, I'm starting to notice that it's starting to set. It's starting to dry a little bit, which is good. We want that. And that's how quick that it happens. So let's say you're out landscape painting, okay? This is one of the first things that you want to do before laying all the colors out on your palette, before doing too, too much, um, you know, what I like to do is figure out the dimensions of the canvas that I'll be working with based off of the scene in front of me. Get out that panel, lay down this ground color, leave it up on my easel, and then really study the scene and lay out all the colors. And usually by the time 10 or 15 minutes goes by, this is ready to be painted on. Now, there's a couple things you wanna think about. Is it ready for color? Not quite. What it is ready for is a raw umber drawing, which is pretty standard for 
most of the videos that I have shown you on here. Um, if I'm doing a direct painting on here without doing a drawing first, I'm using raw umber. So if we take a little bit of the raw umber and let's say that my painting is on an easel and I'm ready to use it and it's starting to dry a little bit, I can take some of this raw umber just a little bit. I want to kind of not draw too dark, so I'm kind of wiping it off. Maybe I'll wipe it off on the paper towel here. You could take this and let's say you start to map things out like, you know, you're like, okay, the height of my tree is here. The bottom of the tree is here, the horizon line, right? So I'm drawing right on this, the trunk of the tree. There's no problem that the background isn't completely dry. It's still in the process as I start to map out these elements. And so I could draw with line if I wanted to. Or maybe put it, you know, have a mountain or whatever. Or I could start to draw with more mass as long as it's nice and light because again, I'm using this raw umber, and raw umber is going to dry, especially if you're outside, raw umber will dry really, really beautifully in time for color. So typically, um, like when I'm landscape painting, outside, plein air painting, I will draw the scene in raw umber like this, map out everything, you know, maybe there's like a uh, barn or something. especially if you're outside and it's hot, this will dry so, so, so fast. Even the new lines, even your new lines will draw fast because it's raw umber, because it's the fastest drying pigment on the palette. Um, then I could start, if I wanted to, fill in some mass, like I was saying, or, um, you know, figure out, is there, you know, a design element, a path, whatever you're doing. You can fill in some values if you want to show the difference of the light sky here. You could fill in some values like like very, very lightly to just get a sense of the darker areas without making them too dark, right? We're not in any type of underpainting or first layer. We're never trying to load on the paint. It's just a sketch. You could also, if you wanted to use the wipeout method, right? So if the sky um, was the lightest value, you could take a clean brush, again, dip it into that mineral spirits, wipe it off. This, yeah, I was gonna say, was this a clean brush? And you could see if you could still wipe away. And I can, it's still, malleable for a little bit. It's starting to dry so I might not be able to wipe off all the way down to that white of the canvas again like I was able to last time. Let's see if I use a paper towel. Maybe I could. A little bit. You know, but if I used a little bit more mineral spirits I could get all the way down again. pretty light. So in this way, that's what makes this Campitura, this raw umber ground color, so, so helpful. It can serve you so many purposes that it's definitely what I recommend using. And again, that the mineral spirits dry by evaporation. So already, this, when I rub my fingers on it, it doesn't pick up anymore. It's nice and dry and ready for any color application that I want to put on top of it. So I hope that you enjoyed this presentation of how to use the Campitura and that you can use this method in your painting practices at home.